So at the very beginning of teaching the class, I thought, you know what, there's no reason to use a textbook. You know, one of the things that students don't realize is that as faculty people, you can call up a publisher or email a publisher and say, hey, I'm teaching this class, send me every textbook you have. And they send them for free, which is kind of embarrassing when you think about how expensive textbooks are. But so I got all these digital marketing textbooks and they just struck me as being at best three or four years behind the times. And so while I saw that some of the topics were good, a lot of the topics were, you know, I, I don't want to lie. In 2012, I saw some textbooks that were, that were referencing MySpace and GeoCities. And so that, you know, it just seemed like I would be laughed out of the room if I had made that a reading assignment. And so I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have something that was, that was much more current. And then frankly, I also think that, you know, higher education is really expensive and, and the, the cost of tuition and all the things associated with it are really, really, really high. And so that to, to create a system where students don't have to buy a textbook, I think that's, that's a win for the students as well. So not only are they getting better content, they're getting uh, the, 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 the content that they don't have to pay for. And so that has definitely been a, sort of a, a philosophy of mine that I, I will never ask the students to uh, pay for anything additional to take the course. So the first thing I did was I just looked at a lot of digital marketing uh, hiring uh, web pages. I would, you know, I would go to different firms, you know, in-house versus uh, agency, big versus small you know, New York, Seattle, San Francisco, anywhere, and I would look at what the sort of entry-level job postings were and what were the skills associated with those jobs. And so then that really helped me figure out, okay, you know, these are the topics that, you know, a, a person would need to know for that first job. And then I got the advice from some of my colleagues who knew some of our alumni, and they said, you know, you should talk to Andrew Dumont, you know, who's a, a pretty famous alum of our university. And, he, and, and people like Andrew, other people, uh, were really good resources because they helped validate the things that I thought were going to be important for the students to know. And not only would they validate those things, they would also make other suggestions. And they'd say, hey, you know, it's not on the job postings now, but you know, I, I really do think six months from now, virtual reality and augmented reality would be a really good thing for them to know. And so then I'm able to add those types of topics as well. And so the structure of the class stays pretty constant over the course of from quarter to quarter with some tweaks here and there. But sort of the topics that we, the, the, the resources that they use for, to learn about those things, I, I, I update pretty, pretty much every quarter. I always send an email uh, before the first day of class and say, this is, you know, these are the things you need to, to, to prepare before the first day of class. And there are some readings and, uh, th that, that are from my blog. But then on that first day of class, as I you know, go through the syllabus, I reiterate, there is no textbook for this class. There, everything that you will access for this class is free. And I would say that that makes me a fairly popular professor on the first day of class. And part of that also, not only is it to show the value, you know, to, to help them in that particular time, but I really, I, I really look at part of my job as a being a professor is to encourage them to be lifelong learners. And so I want the students to know that they can, they can be lifelong learners without taking classes. They can be lifelong learners without buying textbooks. To be a lifelong learner, you need to know what is good content and what is bad content, and what is a good resource and what is a bad resource. And by not using a textbook, which you know has this some sort of, you know, like it's been blessed as some sort of holy book, you know, that's that's a really good thing to, for them to realize. Oh, I don't need to just be in college to be a learner.